Hi again guys and welcome to the 58th episode of Weekend Warriors on Gran Turismo 6 on this occasion. And this particular vehicle is another model from the TVR lineup. As many of you guys know, I am a huge TVR fan. I love most of their cars. There are only one or two exceptions that I'm not super hot on. They're okay, but there aren't really any that I specifically dislike. Now this, for me personally, is one of the cars that I'm more lukewarm on. The T350. Now of course there are a couple of variations of the car. There's the T350T, which is the Targa top, which you can take the roof off of. And there's the T350C, or Coupe, which is this one, the hard top. And of course, if you're looking purely for the best track performance, nine times out of ten, the coupe will be better because it will be lighter. And one of the main reasons for that is also why it's a stronger car. And that is, it doesn't need the extra chassis reinforcement that a convertible does because you've only got the floor pan holding the car together. Whereas in a coupe, of course, you've got the roof section as well, which makes a huge difference. Now, this car is. And I've said this, I believe, about a couple of other TVRs as well. Is basically the definition of a sports car. It offers everything you could possibly need from a vehicle like this. Now, of course, you could always say, because there are some people like this, well, it doesn't have the most power of a sports car. It doesn't have as much performance as, say, some supercars. But of course not. That's the whole point. This is basically the pinnacle of what a sports car can be before it becomes a full-on supercar, or even, I would say, a super sports car. And, of course, TVRs are known for a couple of notorious things in real life. They're known for not being very reliable. I know a guy who had one. Some mornings it just wouldn't start, and that was a Tuscan, which is one of their better-made models, and even then... This one is also one of their newer models, even newer though than the Tuscan, and it's kind of like the Sagaris, but without its battle armour. That's the way that I think of this car. It has a very similar shape, very similar style, and it's just a car that I've never had a huge amount of love for. I love the Cerbera, I love the Tuscan, I love the Griffith, I love the Chimera. This one though just never really did it for me. That being said, however, this car is an absolute monster when fully tuned. Because, as with most TVRs, not only does it have the power and torque to get the job done, which you would typically expect of most sports cars, but unlike many other sports cars, a surprising amount in fact, it's really light. You'd be surprised how many sports cars actually aren't as light as you might expect them to be. Many of them weigh 11, 12, 1300 kilos sometimes, and sometimes that's even fully tuned. This one weighs 993. That is pretty amazing, especially for a car that isn't overly small. It is small-ish, but it's not exactly a Lotus Elise. Now, unlike something like a Lotus Elise, the advantage, as I mentioned earlier, that a TVR also has, is that as well as being compact and lightweight, it doesn't have the typical downside of a small, lightweight British sports car, which tends to be that they're not as powerful, like a Lotus or a Marcos. TVRs are nothing like that, because they have big engines and a lot of power. Even without tuning, most TVRs can outrun most other sports cars in their segment and sometimes even higher. And that goes for this one as well. The engine is a naturally aspirated 3.6 litre straight six, it's rear wheel drive, and fully tuned you're looking at just under 550 horsepower, just under 400 foot-pounds of torque, and when you combine that together into a car that weighs less than one tonne, well, yeah, it's quick. Of course it's quick. And in fact, in Gran Turismo 6 terms, in its fully tuned form, it's got more horsepower per tonne than a Veyron. 552. That's pretty impressive for a 75,000 credit sports car. Now, the PP level could easily be far too high on a vehicle like this. It's got high power, high torque, and low weight. That is a mixture which typically makes cars very high. This one, though, is... Quite reasonable, I would say. 562 is basically right on the level of where you'd want it to be. With a slight amount of detuning to, say, the 550 or 560 pp level, you can have yourself a track weapon. In a straight line, this thing can do roughly the same kind of speed as many of the other TVRs, including the Cerbera, the Tamora, the Tuscan even, around 250 miles per hour, which, although that's not as quick as I would argue it should be, it's certainly quick enough for most tracks. 
And of course, being a TVR, acceleration is not a problem, not whatsoever. The only potential disadvantage then is what it's like around corners, because again, that's another thing that TVRs are notorious for. So, what is it like? Well, actually, this car is possibly one of the best TVRs ever made in terms of handling. Now, the Sagaris, of course, took that even further, but this one, even in its simpler form, really showcases the brilliance that a TVR can have around the track. Some of them aren't really designed for that as much. The Cerbera comes to mind in all of its forms, be it the original Speed 6 or the Speed 12 or even the 4.5, which is technically a facelifted version. It's not really a cornering machine, and even the Tuscan isn't really either. The T350, though, is. It's much more of a direct rival to stuff like the Marcos TSO. And it shows. It's a great track car. And for 75 grand, the simple fact is, it's very difficult to find another sports car in the game that can offer the same kind of all-round ability as a car like this can. And that's not just a trait of this car, it's a common trait of TVRs. They offer fantastic all-round ability for their respective prices. So it's a relatively simple review, and it's not an overly biased one because although I do love TVR, as I said, I'm not a huge fan of this car, but even I admit, it's a brilliant sports car. It does everything you could realistically need a sports car to do. It's light, it's affordable, it's fast, it's good through the corners, but at the same time, it's fun, it's chuckable, and it's certainly driftable. What more could you really need? And so, if you're looking for a good all-round example of a sports car, why not give the T350 a look? But that's it overall for this particular pick. I'll see you guys next time, and as always, thanks for watching.